ಹಾರ Be edited out. Yeah, this will all be edited out. Edited, okay, edited. Ed, ed, that is—is is is that not? Is, is this podcast Goldhorn worthy? Uh, no. Lionel. No. Oh, okay. Uh, is that Lionel, not? So is, this, is a, this is a freebie. This is a freebie, and this is to make the AML Nation feel better. There's your Hollywood Aww. squares. There you go. Kevin. There's your Hollywood squares. Kevin's, it, Kevin's in the center uh, square. There we go. Strang. I have Strang in the middle. Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, I have Strang also. in the middle. Yes. Oh, I got <laughs> Not only is it the Hollywood squares, it's also the Brady bunch. Brady bunch. Yeah. yeah. You gotta like look, yeah. look all over. <laughs> Kevin's doing that. Great. <laughs> Hard part. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So so far we've had 45 seconds of absolutely nothing. All right, everybody turn. I'm Isn't going to look. Is that for the course? Your, your yeah. point being? Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see. No, that's wrong. Let me, where's the, oh, there it is. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, oh. Turn cameras off? Oh, okay. Okay. I, just, I wanted to make, I want to watch, see to make sure you don't get any closer than three feet. Yeah. Um, okay. So here it is right now. It is uh, thir- March the 19th. It's Thursday evening at approximately 8.30 p- a, uh, p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And what this is is this a podcast that will not be edited at all. So what we do will be, that way I can get it done and get it out. So it, uh, when everybody hears it, it's going to be uh, March 19th. And this is just a way of everybody connecting in the old AML Nation. It's us trying to make the world feel, it's us trying to make the AML Nation feel good. What do you think about that, Bruce? The moderately agitated male boy. He's, he's oh, probably yeah. on mute again. Oh, no, no, I was no wondering which Bruce you were talking about. No, it's Kelly. It's Kelly. The modeler simply known as Kelly. That's right. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. Well, don't, don't we do this every week? We make we make everyone feel good? <laughs> yeah. How is it different? <laughs> so I think the first thing we got to get out of the way, because there's nine of us here, uh, after this, we'll do the introductions. But I think the first thing we got to get out of the way is everybody to talk at the same time. So on, <laughs> why, why so, would you want to do that? Do that? On the green, 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 green. <laughs> my God! But how will you know when to talk at the same time? Yeah, That's and the great. horse you rode in on. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Kevin Merckx is here all week, folks. Yeah, yeah. But That's bumped. right. Hard part. Tip your waitress. Uh, so uh, we are in the midst of a, a of a world uh, tragedy for lack of a better word. However, my own personal feeling, and because we are now recording and we're not editing, my own personal feeling is we should put the subject of the world pandemic aside because, exactly. because I personally, I, I am, and Bruce, uh, uh, the moderately agitated male boy, I think I'd like uh, see if you can back me up on this. And actually, I think, uh, I think our buddy Ralph, uh, the uh, angry Ralph could also back me up on this. Uh, Front camera or back camera? Yeah, no. I, I can be I can be somewhat opinionated on occasion. Really? No. <laughs> no, I don't believe that. So I think we're better off not to get into that subject at all. Exactly. I, I think we're better off to to try to try to talk about life in general and and things and stuff. So uh, first off, we'll inter- yeah, we're here we're here to be like alcohol to help you forget. Yeah, we are. I love that. <laughs> So before we get started, Bruce, can you help me with this? Is this the first podcast since the last podcast? Absolutely. Positively. All right. All right. Let's introduce everybody from left to right. Hey, Uh, I found my toothpick. (laughs) 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 I lost lost a toothpick out of my uh, Swiss Army knife, and here it is sitting on my computer table. (laughs) Are you going to introduce the toothpick? Yeah. 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 Introduce the toothpick. So, um, and the other thing we have to be very picky. Yeah, the other thing we have to be very careful of is not to talk over top of each other because there's actually, how many of us are are there, nine? Nine. 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 That's the most we've ever had. (laughs) The number nine, not the German nine. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Nine, nine. Nine. It's nine, nine. The Roman numeral nine. Which would remind me of my neuro. That'd be IX. We're we're, we're, we're team IX. 
Team IX. And Bruce, just out of interest, how do you spell 54 in Roman numerals? 54 <laughs> would be L I V. V. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, the, we had an argument about that one time. Oh, Not, what about 45? What about 45? Okay, let's go with 45 in Roman numerals. Bruce? 45, take... I believe, would be X L V. Yes. What does the X stand for? 10. One ten less ten. than L. Yeah, one less. X is 10. What is an L50? What is yeah. L? Yes. L is yeah. 50. L is 50. Wouldn't it just be VL? No. That's five. That's five less than 50. <laughs> yeah. But how does the All right, X... look it up on the internet. How Come does on. the X get in there? That's where I get connected. I don't know. Find it's a Roman and ask him. Yeah, yeah. find X, a Roman and ask him. The X before the L means that it's the 10 before the L. So, so 40. It's, it's 10 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 45, 45 is XLV. Yeah. Right. Ralph's the, it's, it's Ralph's the Italian. Why don't you let him describe the logic? <laughs> Go ahead, Ron. Sorry. Say that again. I said Ralph's the Italian. Why don't you let him describe the logic for us? <laughs> it's, uh, he's, he, he's waving his hands over. around right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Italian, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome to the AML Network, where this week we learn how to wash our hands, and tonight we're working on our numbers. <laughs> <laughs> turn uh, signals are next. Yeah, turn signals. This will be brought to you by the letter L and the number 10. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. <laughs> that, that'd be 10 as in Arabic 10 or X as in 10? <laughs> uh, like, uh, now that takes me back to a story of when I worked for the, the Canadian National Railroad. Uh, employee number eight five two three six four. Uh, we used to write, dro- write that out in Roman numerals. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, somebody else just joined us, Adam. Now we can lock the door. Now I'm going to lock the door. Turn off your camera, Adam. Nobody wants to see you. Yeah. <laughs> we saw enough of Adam yesterday. Yeah. Can we hear you? When did we hear? There you are. You? Yeah. How did you see there Adam you. yesterday? Well, he posted a really funny video on his page, and that was that made my day. Oh, I didn't see it. Was it? Was it one? And there he is, opening a beer can. He's still, and now he's opening. Now he's drinking beer. Water, it's water. It's water. It's vodka. Oh, yeah. On the vodka, water or gin or gin or gin. Okay, now we'll we'll let. Now you've given him an idea. Okay, okay, (laughs) Adam, turn off your camera now, Adam. Oh, he's looking at his computer. He's the yeah. leaning in there. There you go. Newfangled okay. things. Who okay. knows how to work these things? <laughs> okay, Adam. I, uh... I mean, <laughs> go ahead. Adam, we know after that video yesterday, you're probably having some new feelings. We're here to help you talk. We're here to talk you through them. <laughs> and talk you off the ledge, man. So if, if nobody explains the video, it's going to be a little inside base. Yeah, exactly. So what's, uh, thank yeah. you. Thank you, Chris. Thank Who's you. Who's on first? So Adam, I'll, well, leave, I'll so, leave that to Kevin. So who wants to describe the video, Kevin? It, it, it was a plumbing. It was a plumbing video. Yeah. Ah. Uh, oh yeah. It was. <laughs> where we should we should let Adam and you know talk about it since he and I it. think so too. It, there's nothing like going to the horse's mouth to get the explanation, Ooh, or in this case. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <that one's worse. laughs> Just the look on his face at one point in that video was enough. All right. I'm now going to his page. He has a beautiful picture of him and his family, his beautiful wife, Jenny. And I'm scrolling through his page now. There's a picture. I think he should just watch it. I don't think I could describe it. Oh, there's a picture of a a toilet. Mm. Watch the video. Or it's uh-huh. a, you could watch it and you could play it live, or you could, you well, could play put it, it this on way. the air. Oh, come on, Adam, Adam, Adam resolved his toilet paper shortage issue. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> okay, uh, Kevin, you need to give people a brief description because it's very rude. Uh, people are already under duress, so it's very rude. So, Kevin, I rely I rely on you as the adult oh. here. <laughs> oh, oh, no. that's, that's that's asking an awful lot right now. It is. We're doomed. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, so Adam installed a uh, an attachment to his toilet yesterday, kind of like a, a accessory add on for his own personal bidet. <laughs> so uh, he did he did a video where uh, 
you couldn't see anything, thank goodness for that. But after he got it installed, he was so proud. He just had to go try it and test it out. And uh, <laughs> he did everything while he was taking a video. And all you could see was, you know, the upper part of his chest and his face. And Kevin, would uh, you say that was, would you say that was delight or <laughs> surprising delight? Uh, you might want to ask Adam that because the look on his face says everything where uh, <laughs> he had quite the surprised look and his cheeks were flush. And I would say, <laughs> I would say overall, you know, it was a success. A bonus. Yeah. But we should hear it right. From I'm a him. new man. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, I would say his cheeks were flushed in more ways than one. <laughs> <laughs> Both well, things. I actually, I actually have a question about that, and I believe I've I've asked uh, the question before, in uh, in in one time when there was a few of us that were sitting around a table or something chatting, and I believe the question I asked was, uh, what if what if when you did did uh, uh, a job, and it turned out it was the biggest one you'd do in your whole life? Like, how would you know that? Who keeps track? Do you keep track? Well, that's the question. How do you keep track of such a thing? Hell, Why you must. You? I don't. I, I, no, it's an inquisitive question. It's like, okay, you're, you're doing a job one day. You stand up. You look. You turn around and you go, no, <laughs> holy crap. <laughs> holy crap. Can, can I add some historical content to this? Certainly can. Certainly. Back, back during the First World War, uh, when the lads were in the trenches, they had latrine areas, of course, and latrines had to be sized appropriately. And the calculation they used was that uh, each man per day produced approximately two pounds of solid and liquid waste. <laughs> <laughs> Who measured that? That is, that is quality information that you yeah. got to hold on to right oh, there. Exactly. <laughs> And, and that holds true on the AML because we are definitely producing <laughs> two pounds of solid and liquid yeah, waste right exactly. now. Exactly. <laughs> Gee, Dad, and, what did you do in the war? <laughs> and, and one of the things they used to try to cover latrines so they could, but uh, uh, the the Germans would look uh, for clouds of flies and stuff, and occasionally lob an artillery shell at the clouds of flies just to catch guys with their pants down, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> The bigger, yeah, that's of course uh, one of uh, Bruce the Mailboy's uh, uh, other hobbies. Odd and peculiar facts about World War Two. <laughs> no, World War One. World War One. Yeah, World War One. Yeah. This is actually from a two-volume set of books uh, written by uh, a guy named Tim Cook about the Canadian Army in World War One. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, uh, Adam, you were you weren't here uh, when we first started, and when we first started, I I tried to make it clear to everybody we have to be very careful. Because there's ten of us here, so we don't want to be talking over top of each other. So we uh, we tra we pr practice that. So let's do that again for everybody. So that Look, Adam we do it now, starting now. So yeah, everybody yeah, do it. Well, on the yeah, count of three. Crazy. And the horse you rode in on. You know, um, you know, Sunder wasn't that funny the first, first time. Yeah, I thought it was just as funny the second time. I, yeah, I, I kind of yeah. always like. Uh, okay, uh, well, it's, you need to know that when I do listen, when I do edit these, uh, which we won't be doing tonight, Adam. This will be. This is going to go out raw because that way we can get it. Out. You're not going to pass it through the magic processor. <laughs> not even through the. Well, I might pass it through the magic processor. Oh, okay. So we all sound really? good. The auto tune. Yeah. You really edit these things? <laughs> I really do. Because if I'm coughing, that's interesting. Imagine what that that's sound like. If he didn't. Maybe all you cut out. <laughs> <laughs> I cut out a lot of stuff, Ralph. Okay. <laughs> like, like keep keep on. I may change my mind and edit this after all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop yourself for the peanut butter. Turns, turns out there was only nine of us. Yeah. 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 What happened to Ralph? <laughs> Nobody remembers Ralph being there. Uh, all right, I'm going to introduce everybody. We're ten minutes in. 14 minutes in and nobody's been introduced left left to right we got uh we got uh from all the way from appleton wisconsin he is the he's at the heart of the music industry in appleton wisconsin he has his, his finger on the pulse of the nation he is the midwest's number one boot guy it's none other than kevin hardpart marks 
Oh, absolutely. Actually, it's the country's number one boot guy, if there we're getting technical. Excellent. Uh-huh. Excellent. And he's also the AML resident gourmand. Yeah. Yes. And like a fine whiskey, I'm smooth and I go down easy. <laughs> and, he, and he has a heart. <laughs> oh, there's so many jokes for that we can't get into. <laughs> I'm not even going to touch it. I'm just going to let it go. <laughs> again, again. <laughs> That's all I got. You disgust me. <laughs> uh, Finally. The, yeah. All that was flowed right down the middle. Nice. And it would have been deep, deep, deep out of the ballpark. <laughs> yeah. 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 Had to let it go by. Yeah. Was just against let the that wind. one go. Was yep. against the wind. Uh, and yeah. all the way from uh, Argyle, Texas. Home of the Fighting Socks, home of Fred the Fighting Sock. Yes, uh, mm-hmm. is our none other than Chris Atkins, who is working for a startup. He uh, he has the uh, he has the longest bio on the AML uh, crew page. Uh, who else was trying to challenge for that? Somebody else I just put up. Kaylee, oh, Kaylee yeah, was. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you have what's your model railroad called? Shared Internet Everywhere West. Now, what does it say on the on the page on your Facebook page? HO scale Sheridan and everywhere West. <laughs> and, and okay. And what else should we talk? It's your, your model railroads in the Texas and Pacific uh, section house. And you just added a beautiful deck to it. Yes. Yes. Howdy. Howdy. And then we have uh, Ron, tonight gracing our, our, our stage is none other than Ron Marsh, who is an up and coming world famous model railroader. Are you feeling the pressure of that yet, Ron? Oh, yeah, every day. <laughs> <laughs> Ron's trains and things. How many uh, viewers, how many subscribers do you have now? Well, at this exact moment, we have 24,672 people subscribed to the channel. Oh, you might want to yeah. check wow. that again. Uh, you might want to wow. check that again. It might be 71. Okay, yeah, <laughs> it might, be, <laughs> might, might be 70. <laughs> Can I ask Ron a question? You certainly may. What are the things? Uh, what, whatever I decide they happen to be. <laughs> when he runs out of trains, you'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> it may be, uh, it may be Adam's bidet. Um, <laughs> you have to admit, that's a thing. That could go viral, I'm telling you. Hey, oh, yeah. Adam, do you, is your page accessible to everybody? Is it a public page? That post is, because I was asked about yeah, that that post I changed the privacy settings on because I was asked about by twenty or thirty people if, if I would. <laughs> so, but, uh, so it can be shared now. Perfect. It, it, yeah, it can guess, be shared. Guess what I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> so on the AML what? page right well, now, my wife, uh, uh, Bruce. What's I'm... the appropriate group to share that into? Uh, I would put it right on the NMRA page myself. I think it's got to be. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking the. Uh, Gordy, Gordy, Gordy be asleep right now, so they'll never know. So that's <laughs> a that's a pretty fancy uh, toilet. What are those gauges on the side? Those dials on the side. What are they that's for? That's the control. Well, that's man. how you dial it up to eleven, I think. PSI. Yeah. That's like, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, PSI. Yeah. It's one louder. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you it's louder. <laughs> What yeah, is it? that uh, yeah. that that one on the right there. If you crank it, it'll make your face go funny. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask him how he knows. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I th- I th- when I was reading the reviews on those things on uh, Amazon, I was laughing pretty hard, but they weren't lying. This one lady is like, th- like a sharpshooter in war. <laughs> <laughs> She wasn't kidding. She wasn't kidding. Does so it pulsate? Oh. oh, so okay. So it's like a. So it's like a. What do they call them? Bidets or something? Yeah, it's a bidet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, why do Why do they call them bidets? That must be like French it's or something. French. It's a. F- they're from Quebec, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're oh. Quebec. I shoot the puck, Johnny. Make the die for it, eh? Yeah, the bidet. The bidet. <laughs> oh, that's what's all the carrying on. But oh, you installed the bidet. And it shot uh, uh, water up your yeah. <laughs> this is a, uh, onto his nether regions. This is not a. This is not like a it's, second toilet sitting next to the other toilet. 
This is like a retro turning your yeah. Yeah. Toilet yeah. into a uh, no, is, it, is it heated water or cold water, Adam? You know what? It wouldn't matter. <laughs> 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 kind of like when uh, the hygienist cleans your teeth, it doesn't matter much yeah, either, right? Matter, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just like that. <laughs> Uh, to make no, that same sound no, no need to floss now <laughs> no but you will <laughs> I'm telling you this right now they should have called them a good day <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, where God. else are you going to find this kind of entertainment you know, by the I, time we get through 10 people it's going to be time to sign off I think <laughs> <laughs> so you think that's funny you should have seen the install video <laughs> Adam, Adam, but yes, yeah. you, dis- you disgust me. Hey. <laughs> did you watch the video? I did. I did. Yeah. Adam, you may disgust him, but he loves it. Yeah. You know what? I made a lot of people's day with that video. Adam boy, you did. Adam boy, right. you did. Now I don't even remember who I, I introduced. Kevin, I introduced uh, Chris. And I was working on Ron. I, I only got as far. That's right. You're right, Chris. I only got as far as Ron so far. I'm going to have to write this down. <laughs> You're going to introduce Kevin like three times before we get over. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, but seriously, hard part deserves to be introduced three times. Still smooth and easy. Yeah. <laughs> so, And I don't even have a bidet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, Ron, what else can you tell us? Well, you've been, uh, you're like a, a star now at a, uh, Model Railroad Academy. Uh, yes, matter of fact, I'm doing a live stream for right for now. Facebook page. <laughs> 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 he didn't want to say anything. 11 o'clock central tomorrow, actually. but uh, Which would be Friday. A.M. or P.M.? That would be 11 a.m. Uh, central on time, Friday, which will be do it every other Friday. So, which would be twelve o'clock Eastern Daylight 12 Time. Twelve o'clock Eastern. That's correct. March nineteenth, which will be after people will have had plenty of time if they listen to this. Like, uh, like uh, Jordan will listen to this on his way to work. Um, who else will listen to this? Uh, Peter Borchardt will listen to this on their way to work. Lots of people. George Taylor will have listened to this on his way to work. He might have put the FedEx van in the ditch by now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, so right. those, those of you who listened before uh, noon Eastern, uh, go to Facebook, search for Model Railroad Academy, and we'll be there at noon sharp Eastern. And what kind of things will you talk about? Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, wiring. Going to be installing some drop feeders for people who uh, are always looking for new uh, uh, techniques for that. And, May even run a train or two just for fun. Wow, that'd be cool. I got a, I got something, Kevin. I'm gonna, you would, you'll like this. Everybody will like this. Uh huh. So I was trying to explain. Ron and I have been talking a lot how we, how his pod, his uh, video, uh, uh, show, his YouTube video show complements my our podcast, and our podcast complements his video show. And then I was trying to describe to him where how we kind of fit in on the mm-hmm. spectrum. And I said, mm-hmm. he's like Ward Cleaver, and I'm like Eddie Haskell. <laughs> <laughs> like, so that, true. Yeah, is that not about perfect? <laughs> you're, not exactly. ha- you're not having that strang boy over here again, are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's Gee, a beautiful Rod, you're hair. You're looking awfully to lovely today. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful so lovely you have, Mrs. Cleaver. <laughs> <laughs> and that voice you hear right there is Ralph. Uh, the, uh, Ralphie boy, Ralph, Ralphie boy, Renzetti, or as our friend, Jason uh, Clocky likes to refer to you as angry Ralph. That, uh, hmm. podcast just went out, Ralph on Monday, episode 142 and Jason Clocky, he called me on Monday as I was riding my bicycle along the bike path down there in Florida. And, uh, he'd listened to a half an hour of it. And he was pretty happy with the way the whole thing turned out. And then, uh, we, and we were talking about it. Angry Ralph. So, so, but Ralph is also an artist extraordinaire. Are you not? I think you are. You were just showing it. I I can't speak for myself. Sure you can. Go ahead. Say something. Okay. Yes, I am. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I, I beg, I beg to disagree. 
All Last right. night I was working on my little gas station kit and I messaged Ralph a question about the technique to accent the uh, the lines between the the metal panels. He messaged me back and said, "Do you have 5 minutes to go on whereby?" And I did, and he walked me, he took the time out of his evening to walk me through literally step by step and even did a hands-on demo with some styrene and the stuff to show me how to do it. So angry or not, he was incredibly helpful and I am very grateful. I think that's a point that we can uh, certainly reiterate that Ralph very much wants to share all of techniques, all of his techniques and wants to help anybody be a, uh, as good of a artiste as they can or with any part of the artistic part of model railroading or any hobby any model building hobby how about that yep always have always will be any questions that i can answer i will do my best if i can't find an answer or if i don't have an answer i'll go find one what's your feeling you. what's your feeling on pan pastels <laughs> it's, it's funny you should ask they're, they're not they're not bad just not for weathering locomotives and rail cars. All right. They're great for doing structures and scenery. Okay, so uh, uh, that's interesting. Structures that's and scenery. My, that's, my opinion. that's my opinion. Yeah, which is a valuable opinion because you're an excellent artist. Nobody here would argue with that. And what's your Facebook page? My Facebook page is Weathering a Touch of Yesterday. Okay, and uh, do you ever weather like today? Like instead of yesterday, are you ever weathering today? Uh, I was weathering today, but that's no, that's, I, I understand what you're getting at. <laughs> well, will you be weathering tomorrow? Yeah, I will be. I will be. I just finished, finished nine end scale locomotives and I have another nine to go. So yes, I will be tomorrow. So, uh, for Jason's sake, J uh, Ralph, you know, I love you bunches. Uh, uh, Ralph, this is the way I would describe, this is the way I would describe Ralph and not P and you guys have heard me describe Ralph like the way be Ralph and I are both, uh, a hockey, old hockey guys played hockey yep. as, uh, as, all through our teen years and early twenties. And Ralph even played longer than I did. And this is the way I describe Ralph. If I got into a corner and I got into a dust up with a player from the other team, the next guy, the next guy that, that I, before I could even turn around the next guy in would be ralph he'd be like right there as a teammate he'd be a perfect he's a perfect teammate he'd pretty be, much yep. he'd, be, he'd be throwing haymakers right beside me probably well, one, be, probably every, doing more than the haymakers probably every <laughs> third one would hit me in the face but that's another problem <laughs> um what was i gonna say something else ralph uh I don't don't, know. don't i was no don't tell me let me guess i was okay. gonna say something that um don't tell me. Let me guess. It was pretty good, too, at the time. That's why I went into the explanation of why you're such a good teammate and a good person. But now I can't remember what it was. Did it have to do with the yesterday thing? No. No, I think it was just basically your own. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember what it was now. So, Ralph just was showing us uh, some pictures of uh, this really cool, what would you call it, a space motorcycle? Space bike. A space, space bike. Yeah. And are you, a, air bike. are you a fan of Star Wars or Star Trek? Both. Which is your favorite? S Star Trek. Because this looks like the stuff you make looks more Star Wars-ish to me. Is that a is that a word? Star you think War so? Star Wars-ish? Yeah, I think so. But I, I've done both, so. All right. So my question is, uh, when you took those pictures that you showed us, and you, maybe you can put them up on, uh, uh, after we're done here, maybe you can put them on the Modeler's Life fans page. For uh, sure. Uh, that would be cool because they're beautiful. Did you take those photos with the uh, with the uh, camera on your the front camera or your back camera? <laughs> Here we go. Uh, that sounds like okay. an inside joke. It is. It is an inside joke. It, no, it was gonna, on the I'm going to answer it. I'm going to answer it to the best of my knowledge. <clears throat> I used my cell phone, and I used the front facing camera, which has a better pixel rate than the one that where the screen faces you. <laughs> oh, How's that? That's good. Here comes the unedited part. 
<laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not getting into this crap again. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's not an inside joke, Kevin, because everybody heard that argument. Yeah, that's true. That was the worst hour of my life. It was not. It was, it was great. These two guys and Kaylee sending me messages saying, you know, should we stop them? And I'm going, are you kidding? This is gold, it's, Jerry. It's, it's gold. 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 Yeah. Gold. You know, Jerry gold. You know, maybe we could replay the NMRA insurance conversation, too. While we're <laughs> oh, man. You know, just for just for kicks. Yeah, exactly. I don't think so. Let's see who else. we got. Oh, um, OK, we're getting down to it now. Uh, uh, Bruce, can I introduce you now? Do you mind? Knock your socks up, man. All right. And now uh, and he's got his mic on. He does. He's had it on the whole time. So it's next up, yeah. relatively quiet in the house tonight. I don't know what's going on. Uh, tonight we have we also have Bruce, the moderately agitated male boy, who yes. who is uh, who is uh, a good friend of mine. We've been how long we've we been friends, Bruce? About nineteen ninety. How long have I been irritating the crap out of you? Uh, about nineteen ninety one. That's a, it I took that long. Yeah, yeah, it took that long. It took so. that long. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I only met him in the fall of night. Nice, sweet. That's a good one. Um, and then we have uh, our very own uh, Tom uh, Super Agent 0013 Jacobs, all the way from Robesonia, Pennsylvania. Good evening. Home of the what's the high school there? The Conrad Weiser Scouts. Seriously? Yeah. What is that? The, okay, so they're the scouts. Yes, Conrad Weiser, who settled in the area, was a uh, was a scout, trader, uh, Indian tre- uh, treaty negotiator back in the, the pre Revolutionary War times, and so the <laughs> sports teams are named the Scouts. And, and fun fact, he had a brother named Bud. He did. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Right off the top of your head, that's a good one. Uh, and then uh, we have our very own. Uh, so Tom will come back to you and ask you questions about your layout. I'm not blowing by you. I don't want you to think. That's of, okay. I don't it's all right. You, I don't you think I'm just blowing by you. That's okay. I think uh, Tom. I think this is a fair question for you. I think this is a legitimately fair question for you. Are not? Would you not say you're experiencing the early days of Bruce's and my friendship? You just get into that part where, boy, you really like being friends with me, but holy smokes, can I irritate the living crap out of you sometimes? <laughs> um, I I wouldn't go that far. Um, I think our our conversation, <coughs> our conversation the other day was interesting. <laughs> um, you know, but uh, it it you know at the end of it, you know, I I thought we, I thought we cleared the air. You you did at at the end of it in the final analysis, you did have a fair point, and and I I thought that we resolved our our uh, points of view into a, a mutually agreeable position. Oh yeah, for sure, absolutely. And I would say Bruce and I always come to uh, we're mutually agreeable positions, and then he goes away going, "Holy mackerel, he can irritate the crap out of me." <laughs> <laughs> But you know, in in all honesty, I mean, I have I have a, a colleague at work who is probably one of my closest friends there, and we irritate the the gull horn out of each other all the time, you know. And and the fact that you know, I, I mean, to me, that's that's the mark of a solid friendship when you can have, you know, a, an actual legit serious disagreement and. You know, and and sort it out. You know that that to me, that's really the the hallmark of of a solid relationship. Oh, absolutely. The best thing about uh, me and Bruce being friends for so long is that uh, I know that he'll never take anything personally. I may be irritating the living crap out of him at that moment. But... <coughs> Are you okay, Kevin? Oh, sorry. I hit the wrong button. I was going to hit the mute button, but I like hit the I like hit the camera button. Maybe yeah, I yeah, don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there we go. There you go. Um, okay, so uh, moving right along. Uh, the next up is uh, Kaylee Zhang, who is single-handedly builds turbine engines for Pratt & Whitney. But the amazing part is, after she's built the motor, 
she installs it on the on a Airbus A three twenties single handedly on one of those scissor lifts, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know my secret. <laughs> so which bolt do you put in? Three bolts per, per <clears throat> engine. But you're you're working on plans for maybe four bolts because I can't stand going down the runway watching the or watching the engines wiggle. That really throws me. <laughs> yep, it's always the front center bolt first, oh, then it? the rear two. Okay, so there's one of those. So it's a triangle. It's a triangle, oh. which is a very stable configuration. Well, exactly. okay, all right. Well, here's the problem. I usually sit towards the front of the plane, which I don't suspect I'll ever be doing on Southwest because they have some sort of rush seating. And I I know I'll just get trampled in the aisles as people are trying to get through seat. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I end up I end up one two things is when uh, when I'm uh, sitting at the window I like to look out down at the ground as we're going down the runway because it looks very similar to when you're riding your motorcycle and you look down at the ground it's kind of cool but then right out of the corner of my eye I always see the engine and as we get faster and faster and we go over the bumps it starts to wiggle more and more and i'm thinking that baby's going to just snap right off before we ever take off <laughs> <laughs> so that's where i'm in that's how i get into trouble with that what else do you do you're the nutmeg girl yep I'm the superintendent of the nutmeg division and that which is part of the northeast region of the NMRA the northeastern region yep and you're also the photo contest chairman of the northeastern region yep and what else? And what uh, what else do you what else do you run or because you're, so, you're you're yeah. you're aspiring to be like the modeler simply known as Kelly. I know. That's kind of scary <laughs> actually. <laughs> Kelly's rubbing off on me. That's not good. Oh. Yeah. That's not Let good. it go, Kevin. Let it go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh what else do you yeah, what else do you oh, run? I work at I also work at Tom's trains. Oh yeah, that's right. And uh, do the install all the installs for Tom, and then yeah, that's pretty much a good summary. So, uh, what time does your day start? Uh, early. <laughs> yeah, like, are you one of those people that it's just like doing so many things in the day? You're just you're one of those like really uh, uh, organized, uh, running around kind of people. What sleep? Oh, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> Um, what did you have for lunch today, Kaylee? What did I have for lunch for today? Um, I had Chinese actually. Oh, did you go like figure, that? right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, for those who don't know, uh, that would be a fun thing to do after we do this. We'll come, that will, you know, this is a good subject. Kaylee is of Chinese descent. Your parents were born in China, right? Yep, mm -hmm. and you were born in, uh, uh, New York City. New York City. But you lived in New Jersey. But I lived in New Jersey. Yep. Phillipsburg. Yep. How about that? Ah, very good. I well know. done. Yeah, not bad, eh? So you're 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 first generation American from Chinese uh uh p parents, right? Heritage. Yep. Mm hmm Exactly. Perfect. Uh I can hardly find I can hardly wait to find out what heritage uh Kelly is, but we'll get back to that. <laughs> <laughs> So and finally, oh. finally, uh, th we have the modeler known <laughs> simply as Kelly, who is yellow. The, yellow. He's the president of every model railroad club within 102 miles of Medford, Oregon. And you're the president of the HO Club. The HO Club, the, or, the uh, Historical Society for the Railroad, the Southern Oregon Hist Railroad Historical Society. Um, I might become the vice president for the live steamers. <laughs> I love how you say you might become. Why? why? Well, they have to, they, well, they have to elect me. I would have been elected um, this Monday, but they can't. They uh, postponed the meeting because of uh, the you know what of so. the COVID nineteen. Yeah, but wouldn't vice president be a demotion? No, because I am also the safety officer and head <laughs> landscaper. <laughs> so you're going to be the vice president, the safety officer, and the head landscaper of the yeah. Well, why don't you just be president and get it over with? No, that's that's too much focus on that one. That, that's, are, uh... are there any other members of this club? I'm just <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> a solid question. That's a very good question. It's one of those things like who wants to be president and nobody raises their hand. So, Or they just point to you. Yeah. yeah. And... It's easy to be president of a club when you make one up every other day. <laughs> yeah, <saying>. right. <laughs> 
Yeah, the Ron, thing. you're the president of the uh, El Dorados. <laughs> El Dorado exactly. Springs. I'm the president of the El Dorado Springs uh, uh, Model Railroad Club. Yeah. And the vice president and the chief landscaper. Yeah, I don't think we mentioned that you're from El Dorado <laughs> Springs, Missouri. Yeah, well, it's it's hardly worth mentioning, but <laughs> um, we're not we're not quite the edge of the world, but you can see it from here. So. <laughs> uh, okay, Kelly. It's flat. It's Are you saying flat. the world's flat? Yes. It is in it is in Missouri. Missouri. Come to Missouri, I'll show you. <laughs> we're we're very close to Kansas. You have to remember. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So so it's kind of like you can see your dog running away for three days. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Until he hits Denver. He hits Denver. Uh, <laughs> uh, George Taylor, I apologize. Um, so Kelly, what heritage are you? What's your uh, you're you're a retired firefighter from yeah, Connecticut? I know what heritage he is. He's yeah. Irish. I, Kelly's an Irish name. Oh, no, you'd be surprised. I'm Welsh. You're Welsh. What is? Yeah, what were, where Welsh. were your? Where were your parents? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what, Ke- <laughs> Kelly. By the way, is the most common name in Ireland. Yep. Um. So where where were your porn, parents born? My parents. My mother was born in Boston, Massachusetts, and my father was Philadelphia. But um, my uh, mother's family came over on the Mayflower. And uh, from Wales, well, I don't know, probably. <laughs> and then my father, no. <laughs> my father's father's ancestors came over from Wales and be, were coal miners in Pennsylvania. Oh, really? Yeah. So your wow. mother, your mother's gr- grandparents came. Your mother's parents no. came over on the Mayflower. Ancest- like how old your <laughs> mother? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my ancest, her ancestors came over on the Mayflower. And how would you be able to verify that? Uh, they have a uh, they. Follow the lineage all the way back you, to William Bradford. Yeah, if you can get within five generations, you can you can prove it. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, because yeah. they've mapped out all the all the descendants five generations off the Mayflower. Mm. So you feel fairly confident that you're a direct descendant of the Mayflower? <laughs> yes, yes. But you know, at that level, Mayflower level, mm-hmm. you have a, over a thousand grandparents. Probably. I mean, at that. So I mean, there's a lot of lines to get to. Oh that yeah, yeah. Tenth grandparent. But that was only 200 years. Ago. How long ago was that? When did the Mayflower? 16, oh, 16, 1620. Yeah, 1620. No, oh, ish. Yeah, it's not so 400 years ago. Yeah, yeah it is. Or That's just about. Yeah. And 1809. Now, what is that? How does it go? Six in 16. 1492. Columbus sailed yeah, the, the ocean blue. Yeah, you mean that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with the Mayflower, but it's a good, it's a good little <laughs> rhyme. <laughs> You know what? I failed that. I failed you that. Know, I this failed. is awesome getting uh, American history lessons from Canadians. This is the best. <laughs> I, don't, well, I don't think well, I'm okay, I, smart boy. You want to try some Canadian? History? Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I hear something. I learned uh, a lot of a uh, lot of people that were loyalists during the Revolutionary War moved to Canada afterwards because, Canada. of course, it was the same government. Yes, and we almost and the United States almost got Canada. Almost. Not, not we're, even still, we're, we're still working on it. Not even, not not even, even close. close. <laughs> not even they close. Negotiated, they negotiated. They go negotiated that out to make sure that you kept it. <laughs> no. <laughs> so this, no. <laughs> see, there's this little war called the War of 1812, which the Americans pretty much lost except for one battle after the war. Everything was signed. Uh, so. and, 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 and the Brits <laughs> we burnt the White House. It's true. Should, no, the, Brit, the Brits, the Brits, <laughs> the Brits. So yeah, the they, Southerners. That's no feat. And here's they've been trying to here, get back at us ever since. And here's a fun fact for you: all the uh, the wonderful Cajun stuff down in Louisiana is a result of uh, the yeah. Acadians being kicked out of Nova Scotia and moved down right. to the Louisiana area. So that's why you guys have Cajun, French Canadians. Uh, Acadian. Thanks to Canada, you have some culture. <laughs> Wait a minute. Have you ever met a Cajun? Come on. Uh, have you ever watched the swamp people? Yeah, like no, unfortunately, we also, unfortunately, <laughs> we also I, didn't, I didn't say what kind of culture. Was just the actual culture. Yeah. So we yeah, have we, you we, to we have you to blame for uh, Justin Wilson. Yeah, <laughs> and Hawaiian pizza. That's cow. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's Canadian and basketball. Yes. Yep. That's yeah. basketball. That's right. Um, Mr. Naismith well, from I've uh, been trying to figure that one out. How well, Springfield, Massachusetts prior. could be the home of basketball when everybody knows it, was, knows it was invented in Canada. It was invented by a Canadian. Yep. Not in Canada? 
No, oh, he yeah. came to he came to he, Massachusetts. He was down at the uh, university down there. Yeah. Oh, is he bored or what? Yeah. He was. Yeah, there's not much happening in our prior. No. But, uh... <laughs> he didn't like the fact that they were trying to put a basketball into a basket and they had to take a ladder out to go and take it out of the basket. And so he cut the bottom of the basket out and boom. There and they, they could poke it out with a stick and then he made the hole bigger and, and then yes, it's history. Is that it? Because that sounds very subtle, the difference. That's kind of like a, a hockey goal having a net or not having a net. You still get a goal, right? Oh, no, the, the game, yeah. Well, it wasn't the game being played in Nova Scotia. It doesn't Hockey? matter. Yeah, I, th- Hockey? I thought basketball yeah. was invented in Canada. I, I thought it was invented in Canada. Why Canadians? In Canada. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Canada? Canada. Canada. Canadians in Canada. Well, I'm sure everybody here has heard how they invented how to spell Canada, right? Can I can I ask a question? Absolutely. Have we introduced everybody yet? I believe we have. Yeah. Okay. Now, yep. We've got Adam. Uh, we got Adam. Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh. uh, well, oh, yeah, but man. he got. I knew I'd I don't need. Something. I don't need no introduction. Yeah. yeah. yeah you just go look. No, not after that video. You don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> So go to Adam Pinellas' page and look up his video. Adam is spelled A-D-A-M and Pinellas is P-I-N-A-L-E-S. What's your, what is, okay, so Kelly, so your heritage is, uh, your mom Your mom was born in Boston and your dad yep. was born in Philadelphia. And how yep. did they meet? I have no idea. Oh my goodness. I really What? Oh, no, that- I have no idea how they met. Um, possibly... My father worked. No, he uh, he worked for a steel company. He was doing sales, so he may have been up in Massachusetts when he met her. Okay, so, we're gonna have to make it more interesting than that. Uh, <laughs> hey, that's all I know. Hey, Kaylee, do you know how your parents met? Yeah, it was arranged. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, that would have been that time. Uh oh, somebody's just put up something and now it's gone. It's about the game of basketball. Somebody put it, it on the chat. Somebody read that. If somebody whoever posted that, read it out loud. Okay. I posted it. All right. The game of basketball, as it is known today, was created by Dr. James Nesmith in December eighteen ninety one in Springfield, Mass, to condition young athletes during cold months. The objective of the game was to throw the basketball into the fruit basket nailed to the lower railing of the gym balcony. And he eventually took the bottom out of the basket so they didn't have to climb up anymore. Yeah. So it was invented by a Canadian in Massachusetts. I would have think that climbing the ladder would have been an important part of that physical training they wanted to do in the winter. (laughs) I'm not really sure I understand that. Well, they kept kept sending that in the NBA. They did that now. I'd be a lot more impressed if they had to actually have a, a person <laughs> yeah. on the team I mean, who had to climb the ladder. ladder yeah. 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 I wonder yeah, what but they're then... using for a ball because, you know, basketball is kind of a specific thing, the way it bounces. Yeah. They're using so, one of those weight balls. They were really, really in good well, shape. <laughs> <laughs> but those, those don't balance very well. Hmm. Those well, medicine balls. Yeah. Medicine maybe ball, ba- yeah, maybe dribbling and bouncing would not came later when they had the technology to build a – to make a ball that would bounce. That's well, straight I'm out of sure, Wikipedia. I'm sure in 1891 they had some kind of bouncy thing. Oh, you can't be sure of that. That's a long time ago. Um, look up. I'm gonna yeah, look it up. Um, I'm gonna get back to my Christopher Columbus story. We can't leave without me telling this story. This story typify. This story is a beautiful example of why when I got to the end of high school and I graduated, and I get went to get my diploma on stage, the the teacher looked at me and went, "Oh, you're still here." <laughs> uh so in whatever what, break- what about the hockey story uh lionel what's the hockey story the breakaway go for it they were playing hockey down on down on the <laughs> uh, at the mouth of the saint lawrence there by the yeah, eastern I, provinces i forgot and one, in the winter time one of the guys got a breakaway and he got all the way to toronto i forgot that story we should have told that one bruce in Springfield, we would have had them rolling. Uh, that was how that was how uh, people from the east coast of Canada discovered Toronto. They were playing yep. uh, hockey on the St. Lawrence River, and then one <laughs> of them got a breakaway and ended up in Toronto. 
Bruce, you <laughs> blew that in Springfield. What? Well, we should have told that story as well as well, all you, the other. You're the you're the one who was uh, taking the lead. I was. Yeah, Tom, who was taking the lead uh, we, uh, after we had our AML dinner? We'll describe. We'll set the scene, Tom. After we had our AML dinner at the beautiful Cal's restaurant, there was 25 of us there. We had a great time. We gave away some liquid manure pits. Uh, I had I made the greatest save of all time with Gordy Robinson. And uh, afterwards, Tom, then we went returned to the official AML uh, hotel, the Hampton Inn in beautiful downtown Enfield, Connecticut. Yep. And then uh, Bruce and I uh, relayed some stories that we knew. Right. We had we had uh, that episode of Strang and Wilson live. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, I from what I remember, um, it was it was pretty much 50 50. Yeah, exactly. You guys were, you guys were, I, I had, sorry, Bruce, but I, I got to be honest. You guys were going back and forth between the lead and the straight man pretty well. Yeah, toe but, to toe, eh? but he started it. <laughs> 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 it's his fault. He started it all. <laughs> um, okay, hey, Ralph. Um, he's looking at me. Yeah. Ralph, what's, what's, what's your heritage? Italian. And what were your parents? Born? I was born. I was born in Toronto. My parents were also born in uh, in Ontario, not Toronto. Um, my grandparents came from Italy, right? And they entered the country through Ellis Island. My grandfather. Okay, that's pretty cool. So, do you know what part of Italy they're from? Yep. Um. Da -da -da -da. The east coast, no, yeah, the east coast of Italy, which is the uh, Adriatic side, about central. Um, Abruzzi Ortono, is, the, is the province. Oh, no, Abruzzi no. is the okay. province. I, I think this is a fair statement, is it not, Ralph? You're very proud of your Italian heritage, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah. You, you're, you're, you are first and foremost a Canadian. Yep. Love hockey, but you're very proud of your proud of your Italian heritage. Yep, perfect. Uh, a, a hard part. I even had I even had the chance to represent the Italians in in the Olympics and turned it down. Did you really? In the hockey? Not, well, not the Olympics, but in international hockey. And why did you turn it down? Uh, and my father was the one that turned me on to this. If I had gone back to Italy to play on the national team, uh, I would have been put in the army. Ooh. So I would have been there for at least three years. Oh, okay. That's... And he didn't want me to go, so I didn't go. How old would you have been at that time? Uh, 18. All right. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's probably what that kind of stuff happened, and that would have been. Even though I wasn't born there. Right. It's the Italian heritage that they could have taken me and put me, like, come with the police to the door and and put me into the army. Right, and that was uh, pre World War II, nineteen thirty one. I'm not that old. <laughs> you walked right into that one. That one hit you right in the forehead. Yeah, yeah, that would have been around sixty five, sixty six. That's very cool. And let's not forget the other thing that we need to make sure everybody understands. We've said it before. You are our only. Uh, you, there probably are other professional athletes that listen to our little podcast. And if you're out there, send us in an email so we can talk to you. But you are, as far as we know, the only professional athlete that's been on the podcast because you played one game for the Toronto Toros of the WHA. No, I sat on the bench. You, you were on the, you were in the lineup. Yeah. If you're on the team. Yeah, Did you get a paycheck? Yeah. Didn't play. Did you not? Did, yeah, but did, did you get a paycheck? When did you the get a paycheck? You got a paycheck, but well, there you go. You, yeah, you got right, more if you, you played. <laughs> I didn't play <laughs> better. If you, if you got paid, you're a professional. <laughs> That's right, you're a professional. Yeah. Hey, you get paid when you're when you're playing minor sports too, like seventy five bucks for a week or a weekend. But yeah, yeah. Anyway, but you got to sit anymore. on the bench. Yeah, and and you and where did you play this game at Maple Leaf Gardens? Maple Leaf Gardens. Exactly. My favorite place. The original Maple Leaf exactly. Gardens. Exactly. I got to play on the Maple Leaf Gardens, too. Can everybody turn their camera on for just a minute? I need to take a photo so the world, world can see what we're doing. Camera, camera. Everybody except you, Ralph. 
I'm just okay. kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I better turn mine on too. There we go. All right, boom. Mine. There. Yeah, pre- keep your hands in. Everybody wave. Perfect. Perfect. You guys are so. All right, that's enough of that. Um. Okay. Uh. Hard part. Where are you from? Where? You, what's your heritage? Did he leave? <laughs> He turned off. Okay, his, I think he, I would, I he, like, he, he, he turned off drinking with his day. buddy. I was, I was. No, actually, I do need to leave in twenty five minutes because I have a, I have a video drinking call to go on. Right. And do you what's think your point? Uh, yeah. Do you think it'll take you more you? than twenty five minutes to tell us your heritage? No, I just wanted, I just wanted to let you guys know well, that I'm going to have to duck out. Well, I'm going to have to duck out soon. So I'm, I'm, I'm Slovak with some German on the German side. My great grandfather was a palace guard at Schönbrunn Palace. <laughs> And my great grandmother was the governess to the grandchildren, and they eloped and came to America. Your your grandmother wow. was the the. Can you say that a my, little slower? My you're, great, Slo- you're Slovak and you're what? German. Okay. And your dad was a Pell's guard. Your grandfather. No, my, my great grandfather okay. was a Pell's guard at Schönbrunn Palace, sure. and. Right. Am I going slow enough for you? Yeah, now you are. Okay. And and my great grandmother was the governess to the grandchildren to the royal family. And they wanted to get married and I don't know why, but for some reason there was something that wasn't right over there. So they came over here and eloped and here we are. And here you are. Here we are. You thanks to the you governor. Have blue blood? Yeah, thanks to the governess of the of the royal family. Exactly. So uh, uh, my sister went back to the castle a couple of years ago to see if she could uh, find any historical records. <laughs> 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 and uh, she actually met with she actually met with the the people over there, and and you know records get lost during you know you throw a couple word wars in there, and you know not everything is uh, not everything is there. So. Uh, yeah there we are that's very cool right. yeah so and your so your grandparents are were all, were born in uh so you're a third generation american uh second gen uh one oh, two, third. Yeah, third third generation how come i know better more about it than you do <laughs> <laughs> i don't know you canadians you just seem to you know yeah. be up on your history we got and, the pulse on things you know you got the pulse on things you know where yeah, it's you yeah, know, remember, uh, it's winter in Canada all the time, so they have nothing else to do but <laughs> watch us. <laughs> That's right. And, 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 and have opinions. Yeah. Chris, oh, you just came back from oh, the oh, show. Oh, 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 oh. fired. Yeah, holy smoly. I that wasn't that I wasn't did. even across the bow. <laughs> I, I, I did not say bad opinions. I just said opinions. <laughs> I tend to wow. agree, and and I will say I tend to when my Canadian friends have opinions, I'm like, "Yep, you're pretty much spot on." <laughs> <laughs> well, here's an opinion for you, Kevin. <laughs> all, all, all those food and drink pictures suck. <laughs> well, uh, that's, that's fine. Don't be a hater. <laughs> Uh, so Kevin, when you leave, don't yeah. just wa- walk out and slam the door. And by the way, just so everybody's clear, we are in fact all in the studio. We're in the Stuart L. Stur- on the 48th floor of the Stuart L. Sterling building in the Joe Cummings studios, but we are practicing our social distancing and Kevin, mm-hmm. Kevin, yes. please, uh-huh. please stop drinking out of my glass. <laughs> I just put my finger in it. That's all. <laughs> stop drinking out of my beer. <laughs> <laughs> hey Tom, what's your heritage? Um, pretty much uh, German and French on my mom's side, and German and Welsh on my dad's side. And of how far back? Oh, a long time. Like they like, came over, like in the seventeen hundreds. On the Mayflower. Not on the Mayflower, but they were in that early. <laughs> they were in that early wave. Hey, here's a creepy thought for you. Maybe you're uh, maybe you're related to Kelly. 
Yeah. It's always a possibility. Maybe. Have you done any uh, um, testing yet? Not to see yeah. if I'm related to you. No, <laughs> the DNA. Oh, man. <laughs> you now, I have, for that one. I, I haven't, um, I haven't uh, done like the ancestry or the the twenty three and me or whatever. Yeah. Um, at one time, I I did do some tracing of my family tree, and I actually we found out that. Um, I am related to the Conrad Weiser that I spoke of earlier. Like our, our family is, is related. Apparently they married into the Weiser family at some point generations back. So are you you any wiser for it? (laughs) No, not at all. But it's, it's just interesting that I'm now living. I live about a mile from his, um, his homestead, which is actually a state park now. And I live, you know, in the school district that, that bears his name, just kind of a weird wiser, turn wiser, of events. Wiser. Weird. Why, like, why in, does that name sound familiar? Wiser. Is that the alcohol baron? No, uh, it's the no. P- potato chips. That's, bu- that's bud. No, that's bud. That's bud. That's bud. Yeah. It's potato. No, Not no. to be confused with none. You can, you can buy uh whiskey with the Weiser's name wiser. On it. Yes. That's that's Canadian. Oh, no, pardon. no, no beer, no whiskey, just treaties with the Indians. What about the potato <laughs> chips? No, that's wise. W I S E. Mm. I thought you were always wise. and the ro- and and the rockets. Yeah, let's not get started on that. We <laughs> 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 already been there tonight. Yeah. Uh, hey, Ron, what's your heritage? Uh, Ron, the, Ron Marsh the, of the the uh, star, the star of Ron's trains and things. Ron of Ron's trains and things. That's me. What are, uh, what the, are the what are the things? <laughs> <laughs> Did we have that conversation too? Um, heritage. We'll stick to that one first. Uh, the, the the Marsh family are Scots Irish, and uh, my great 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 grandparents immigrated uh, in the late 1840s during the potato famine. Uh, briefly to Kentucky and then to uh, to northern Missouri, and we've been here ever since. Um, my kids, my my wife is French, so my kids are Irish and French. Her her, her story is really a lot more interesting than mine because her her grandmother was a World War II war bride. Um, you want to you want to get her down to tell the story then? Oh no, but I I, well, I tell it better. But. <laughs> Maybe we should know how many YouTube followers we have before we decide. Yeah, to be yeah. What was the, has the count gone up? <laughs> has the count gone up since the last time we asked? Well, we're checking, <laughs> checking, checking. I meant, I meant, how many does his wife have? <laughs> said her story is more interesting. She has zero. So, <laughs> oh, okay. But just Actually, let her know that next time she thinks she's more interesting than you. I, I trust me, I will, and I'll be prepared <laughs> to sleep on the sofa too. So. <laughs> we'll even mention it to her if you want. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming she listens to all the po- all the podcasts that you're on. I have my serious doubts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite things to say to people is uh I've done this with my poker buddies down in Florida. I have a great gang of people I play poker with in Florida. And then somehow we'll get talking and then, and there's there's one uh fellow he's a southern gentleman and he'll he just He's for some strange and peculiar reason. He's fascinated with the podcast and all, all the goings and comings, and he's always looking my name up on Google. And he'll talk to me about the podcast, and somebody will look at me and goes, "What's a podcast?" And you explain it to him. I said, "You can like listen to it on Spotify." Well, you wouldn't be on Spotify. I said, "Well, actually, you can. You can listen to hundreds of hours of me and my friends talking." <laughs> and then you turn it on on their phone, and they're going, "Really." <laughs> yeah. Uh Chris, what's your heritage, buddy? So I've looked at this a lot. I'm pretty much British Isles. Some some of all the flavors. I have a Irish uh great grandmother and pretty much everybody else has been here since before the Revolutionary War, besides that, which I thought was interesting when I discovered it. So And was that the War of eighteen twelve? Yeah, the Revolutionary War. 1812 was just a blip. <laughs> when, was, the, when was the War of 1812? End of the Napoleonic War. When was the War of 1812? <laughs> right, right after the Napoleonic War. 
that's the story I would keep trying to tell you guys about the Christopher Columbus thing. In 1492, uh, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. So anyways, whatever grade that was for me, three or four, and my father had already decided to discover that school and I, I wasn't necessarily going to be a open air quotes star in school. And, uh, and so for some reason or other, the, the question, we were going over a history test and my uh, exemplary uh, <laughs> marks. And for some, whatever the question, what the question was, it, when did Christopher Columbus arrive in North America? And I put down 1493 and my, I can still remember, <laughs> I can still remember we're in the kitchen and my dad's like, he's looking at my history test and he's looking at it. He goes, well, this question here, he says, we practice this in 14 and 14, uh, whatever. In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And I went, yeah. And he says, well, why'd you put 1493? And I said, well, I figured it took him a year to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, would with, I would have gone with that answer too lionel don't feel bad i can still see my dad looking at me with these kind of his eyes getting bigger like oh my god i'm in i got no shot here <laughs> uh adam what's your heritage it's a good question um give it a shot buddy a little bit of a little bit of everything. Uh, I, I did just do that uh, ancestry thing, so I should be getting an email anytime now. Uh, but from what I know, there's uh, it's a lot of Hispanic, uh, American Indian. Um, there's a lot of there's some English. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where. Hispanic from where? South America. That's what I'm trying to find out. Okay. So is Pinellas a his, Hispanic name, or is it? I don't. I do know that Pinellas stand or means grove of pine trees. Yeah. So mm. that's uh, other than that. I like I said. I don't. I that was something I never really worried about too much. How long has your family been in Utah? I I was born in Houston, Texas. Uh huh. And I've I've lived in Utah. I don't know anything else. I, I okay. my parents moved back up here when I was about two. So do you have any? So, do you have any papers to produce? Pr- pr- do you have any papers to prove you were born in uh, Houston, Texas? Uh, birth, birth certificate. I've got at least one. <laughs> <laughs> got my first, uh, my first uh, bail, bail release, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that just says you were a guest of the Harris County Jail. Huh? Yeah. yeah. No, notice how he says the first one. Yeah. Five years more. <laughs> <laughs> here's a, here's a question for you, Adam. Why does the Easter Bunny carry eggs? Because rabbits don't lay eggs. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. How can some? How can someone? Question. How can someone be dirt dirt poor and and another be filthy rich? I could go on for hours like this. Yeah. Why do you walk on a driveway and? Or, yeah. Why do you park you on a driveway and drive on a walkway? Yeah. yeah. All Parkway. right. All Parkway. right. So uh, we'll just uh, we're going to wrap this up, Kevin. And okay. Seeing as how you have to go soon, we'll let you, we'll we'll let you answer this question first. Okay. Did I, did I ask everybody their heritage? No. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll ask I'll ask Kevin this question, then I'll come back to you, Bruce. Yes. It's uh, too late. <laughs> seriously, seriously, Bruce. How many times a week do I not I- irritate the crap out of you? At least six. Yeah. You put no, yourself on. Not irritate. Yeah. 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 Oh, not irritate. Oh, does a day go by? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. Is there maybe once a year? Oh, you know, but it's a good, it, you know, it's a good irritation, though, <laughs> because I am just happy that you're here to irritate us all. Thanks. Exactly. Wow. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I love you, Kevin. I love you, buddy. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> oh, group hug. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, 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 oh, yeah. No, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Keep her space. Keep her space. Yeah, exactly. Everybody is making some unbelievable um, sacrifices. Let's just talk about that quickly in a nice way. Kevin, uh, what's the hardest yeah. part of this whole COVID 19 thing for you? I can't travel and see my customers. Okay. 
And so do you contact them via electric electronic media? Yes. Email, text, uh, phone, all the above. And uh, I can't see my friends and I can't go out and listen to music with my friends. So we are now switching everything online where some of our favorite bands are now having live concerts. And there's yep. a link. There's a link that you can throw them a few dollars since they can't perform anywhere and they still need to make money. So we donate to the cause. And uh, I need actually I'm going to sign off now because I need to go fix my favorite beverage. And since I can't, can't have a beverage with my friends, we're now doing uh, video chats where not unlike what we're doing tonight, but with hard liquor. Right on. Uh, excellent. That's very cool. That's a neat how you guys are throwing. Yeah. Hey, do, do you have any I, proof I, that it, n- any of us don't have hard liquor? <laughs> <laughs> normally, normally I do, but uh, I haven't. Uh, I've been drinking water right now. Oh, well done, Ralph. So uh, that way I, I can I can go uh, pour for myself an old fashioned and uh, join the chat. And it it gets more interesting by the second one. Yeah. All right, so what, what's in an old fashioned, Kevin? Just to educate uh, the folks out there. Well, basically, well, the the proper way to make one basically is either whiskey, bourbon, uh, rye. I like rye old fashions. Uh, people here in Wisconsin drink brandy old fashions. Uh, just some simple syrup. Um, the original was bourbon, though, was it not? Uh, probably i don't know i don't know the history of old fashions but basically yeah choose your favorite beverage some simple syrup uh an orange peel uh a cherry and some bitters and there's a lot of different bitters that you can choose from uh depending what you like and uh it's it's tough to make a bad old fashioned and i uh throw all that together i don't put soda in it People in Wisconsin put soda in their old fashioned, and that's not really what you should do. And then I just put a very large ice cube, one of those big square ice cubes, uh, in it and enjoy. Now, where do you buy big square ice cubes? Uh, first, you have to buy one of those big square ice cube trays. Right. And water's free. Or I shouldn't say water's free, it costs money. <laughs> <laughs> um, I try to make my ice cubes with distilled water so they come out a little more clear. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> of course. Yes. <laughs> so next time next time we're out, I'm going to be like, is that ice made with distilled water? <laughs> uh, I don't want it then. <laughs> Ke- Kevin, I want someday, before I go, before my uh-huh. day, before my time comes, someday I want to grow up to be just like you. <laughs> i'll take that as a compliment you, absolutely you should we've had this conversation before people won't have heard it yet but you are so dapper and i can't do dapper well well everyone has their thing and and well, so what dapper is, isn't your <laughs> okay <laughs> dapper so, is not your thing so no don't not. worry about it <laughs> no it's not so what would my thing be if it's not dapper my thing i always say is uh my thing is uh dusty <laughs> jovial <laughs> dusty yeah jo- jo- jovial dusty yeah yeah it's like how would you like your martini shaken or stirred and i just say distilled <laughs> probably a better word. yeah 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 exactly um, all right all right hey, thanks guys i'm gonna sign off it's been it's been fun and anytime you want to do this uh uh i'll be happy to uh jump on I've, so hey, actually can i can i say one last thing absolutely Okay, so I was at the O Scale show in Chicago this weekend. It was or this past weekend. It wasn't canceled, and I did have an, a wonderful conversation with Mike Skibby from the Chicago RPM fame, and he stopped by the Fast Tracks booth where I was working, and uh, we had a really good chat. And I told him that we want to start an O Scale modular trolley club, very similar to what they do with the Maju track. H O and N club and he's part of the N N scale club and we want to call it Maju Traction. And I asked him if if they would be okay with that. And we didn't want to uh we didn't want to step on anyone's toes with you know name infringement. And he was all over it and he's like, Yep, do it. And uh uh that way at a show we can have a H O layout and N scale layout and then an O scale trolley layout, all part of the Maju group. That would be very cool. cool. That would be very, yep. very cool. 
Yep. So, and then I and then I met another person, Harz Sonderricker, who I think you interviewed. Um, uh, I did. Yeah. 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 Harz is one. He's a comedian in Chicago. <laughs> and he joined us for uh, drinks and dinner Friday night. And man, he is one funny dude. And and he has he has some great stories. So uh, it was fun so to you got uh, drinks the show and a, uh, you got drinks and dinner and a show. Absolutely, it was a good it was a good time. And then Saturday we went out to a Brazilian steakhouse for a big group dinner, Ooh. and and that was quite the epic experience where uh, uh, they just keep bringing you meat. <laughs> until you can't well, being, eat anymore being the foodie that you are you just loved it yeah you know, it was delicious and uh and i got to a point where i'm like yep i think i'm done and uh you know when the meat sweats start to set in you have to call it <laughs> 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 so all right uh be safe everybody uh wash Kevin. your hand wash your hands call your loved ones tell them tell them you miss them and uh yes ralph Come again when you can't stay so long, buddy. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. I, I uh, love you too, guys. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye. See ya. We'll see ya. See Bye. Ya. Bye. Uh, okay, Kaylee. So uh, tell I us. I thought he was never going to leave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kevin, we love you, buddy. He's, he's still listening. <laughs> he's still listening right this minute. Kevin. Yeah. Kevin. Kevin, no, seriously, buddy, I, I care about you yeah. a lot. Uh, Kaylee, tell us about uh, tell us about how hard this is on you, or what what are you doing right right now to uh, handle this whole COVID nineteen COVID nineteen thing? So we've officially gotten the word uh, that we're all working from home. Um, so since we all have tele telecommuting capabilities. So that's been a huge adjustment for me because I generally try not to work from home only if I really had to. Um, and I guess I really have to now, <laughs> but that's the, the biggest adjustment was trying to get understand balance because when you go to work, you go to work and you come home now with work being in your home, it's kind of hard to realize, wait a minute. Okay. I'm no, I'm not working. I'm at home or no, I'm at home, but I still need to go to work. Yeah, I find working at home can be really hard to get motivated. Yeah, some people like it and 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 it works for them, which I don't. I I'm totally happy for for them. I just know for me personally, I struggle with it a little bit. Um, mostly because I'm just not that disciplined to fo stay focused or get motivated when I'm at home. Yeah. So, Ka so Kaylee, if they shut the factory down, you're you're still going to be working from home, or is it just basically that's it? Yeah, if, even if they close the factory, we we we're, we're still working from home. Um, obviously, certain test engineers will have a harder time, but mm. um, I think there are other things that could be done. Whether it's just documenting, cleaning up, a lot of administrative stuff that normally yeah. wouldn't get yeah. done uh, will probably be the main focus. Hmm. But at least in engineering, most of my stuff I can do is uh, is all. In based in the servers, which once I get into the servers, it's like any other day. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, um. Okay. <laughs> that's very. In that's interesting. <laughs> that's really interesting. Um. So, how do you get motivated then? Like, how are you? What are you doing? Like, what are you, are you finding any tricks or anything? So far, it's just been turning on the computer and um, logging in and just taking at it uh answering emails is usually a good way to start um what i do on, on, a, on a more day-to-day -day business i do attend a lot of meetings so um that's that's kind of helpful and that's motivating in, in that respect um but usually once once the day kind of gets going i kind of get into a routine um but the, like i said the hard part is then realizing okay now it's time to end and actually just relax yeah, I, I, I noticed uh, uh, several times you keep mentioning Kevin when you're saying the hard part. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to let it go. He's not coming back tonight on this show. I know. I miss him already. <laughs> exactly. Kevin, I miss you. Exactly. It's starting to sound like that kid's tune, Frozen, you know? Let it go. Let, let it go. go. Let uh, it go. Here's an interesting question. Uh, 
Ron, you are a uh, a pastor in the local church. That is correct. So how is this uh, COVID-19 thing uh, affecting you? Oh, um, where to start? It, it's interesting for me because it, it's turned my uh, work life really upside down because a lot of the stuff that is a normal part of my week uh, it has been removed. I mean, at this point, uh, they are strongly advising against any kind of public meetings. So, um, you know, our meetings, our services, those sorts of things are not happening. Uh, on the other hand, there are a lot of people uh, who uh, struggle, whether it's financially or, or in some other way that, that we help a lot anyway, who are in a lot worse shape now because they can't get food, because, you know, maybe they had a part-time job at a someplace that's closed or whatever. So uh, I'm finding that I'm, I'm working harder, but at different things that I'm not used to doing. And at the same time, I have the same stress as a lot of entrepreneurs that, you know, when you have a church and you don't have services, you also don't have offerings, begins to make it hard to pay things like electric bills and salaries. So we've got that stress kind of, kind of on top of everything else. Plus the fact that, you know, my wife's a school teacher. I've got one son still at home and they are home. Uh, and so I go to work and then I come home and kind of want to relax and they're bouncing off the walls because they're, you have a terrible uh, case of cabin fever, which I totally understand. Uh, so it, it's been, it's been uh, interesting so far. Uh, not to mention the fact that the night that the world had a run on toilet paper, we were actually out of toilet paper. <laughs> Uh, so, but three days later, we we found some toilet paper, and it's the end of that story. <laughs> I, I, I saw I saw a good meme on on the internet today. There was a row of socks, pairs of socks, lined up in front of a washing machine, and the one pair at the front was saying, "Stay together." <laughs> If, 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 if you get separated, you're going to end up as toilet paper. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw that coming. And yeah, uh, this is what. And this Ron, is what you should have put one of them. You should have put a bidet in that church. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can, can I can I back up and make one comment back about the the, the whole heritage thing that I was going to make earlier, and I just didn't get an opportunity to. I, I just want to say, as as a Scots Irishman, um, um, Mr. Wilson, I was only mildly offended by the uh, social distancing apparatus <laughs> post that you made today. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that made me laugh out loud. But that was, uh, what was that yeah. about? What was that about? He posted a picture of a man in a kilt playing the bagpipes, bagpipes. and, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. and social distancing apparatus. Yeah. <laughs> yep. My dad uh, was uh, my the highlight of my heritage. My dad is Scottish. My mother's English. Um, I'm first generation Canadian. My father was as Scottish as you could get. Him and his four brothers. They bre they lived and breathed. Well, three, uh, I knew three of the brothers. One was lost in World War II. But they lived and breathed being Scottish and be part of the Toronto Scottish Regiment. And, you know, uh, Gordy can attest to this. One of the great questions you always ask a man uh, wearing a quil kilt, quilt, kilt. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Canadians, you know, they have to wear quilts because it's kind of cold. Yeah, there, exactly. So. <laughs> <laughs> extra padding helps. Uh, one, of the, one of the famous questions you ask a guy. Wearing a kilt is, uh, is he wearing any underwear, anything else right. other than the kilt? And there's actually, uh, my father, when the Queen Mother came over in the 60s, there was a picture on the front page of the Toronto, the big Toronto Telegram uh, paper, daily paper, of the Queen Mother, you know, pretending to look under his kilt. <laughs> <laughs> of, course, of course, the standard answer is what's worn under the kilt. Nothing, laddie. It's all in perfect working condition. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I posted the other day about how am I going to explain to my grandchildren that a guy eating bat soup in Wuhan, China, effect, uh, led to the great toilet paper shortage of 2020. <laughs> uh, uh, Tom, tell us about how this is uh, affecting your world. Um, 
Well, like, you know, like Kevin, um, I can work from home. So it hasn't been that bad. Um, you know, I've been, I, I've been able to work, um, and we have plenty of groceries. Um, my in-laws have plenty of groceries. You know, we haven't, we've been able to get everything that we needed. Um, we haven't, you know, run out of toilet paper or anything like that. Um, for me, the big thing is, uh, we're not allowed to travel for work. Um, so it's, created some challenges with meeting clients and things like that. We're having to do things virtually by WebEx and things like that. So it's, it's just kind of a new normal. Um, and for me, since I have about 15 people that report to me, um, you know, a big part of my job is making sure that they're all okay. They've got what they need. Their kids are okay. And all of that. So, um, you know, it, it's been manageable, but it's very, it, it's just very frustrating. Not, frustrating's not the right word. It's, it's just like, you just scratch your head and you're like, wow, you know, this is, this is just unprecedented. Mm. Yeah. 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 Frustrating's a word and, and, uh, and, uh, mind boggling. And there, there's a lot of things that go through your, mm -hmm. your head. Perplexing. Uh, perplexing. On the, on the plus side, the fact that I've been working from home for the for the, about the past week plus and really can't go anywhere, the time that I would normally spend commuting is extra modeling time. Yeah. So, you know, I've been um, I've been making good progress on the gas station kit. Uh, we're we're still doing our our Sunday work sessions. Um, you know, we're just keeping six foot apart and and since the barn is big enough that we can be socially distant in the barn that works out we're plowing forward um on the belt line trying to get the the ends of the layout connected in time for tom stock tom stock is still a go at this point um in fact uh we are at the point where we have our final count uh for our weekend activities and we're going to start firming up the agenda again you know we're we're going ahead subject to whatever else happens but we're uh it's still a go as far as i'm concerned me too me too absolutely no point in talking about that until the point until we need to exactly uh, uh chris atkins uh, thank you very much tom for all your efforts and by the way tom a little <laughs> unknown fact for you something that you're yes. not aware of uh, I was talking to James Mattern, who is your right hand, uh, one of your right hand guys. You, uh, it's J it's uh, Tom Jacobs, and his friend James Mattern, who is soon to be his brother in law. I understand. Yeah. I understand, Bruce. But let's just go with that for simplicity's sake. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, and uh, Val uh, Pistelli, is that how you say his last name? Yes. Pistilly, yep. Okay. Uh, both of the uh, ta uh, James was talk. I was talking to James just a couple of days ago, and I actually was concerned about the social distancing thing in the uh, in your uh, layout building. Mm -hmm. and, J and James just kind of off the cuff, kind of said, "Well, I always try to stay at least six or ten feet away from them anyway, so it's really not a problem." For <laughs> <me>. <laughs> it, it's you know it it, it really it, it really is kind of funny because. When when we're there in the barn, it's like everybody has their own their own project. You know, Val's usually doing something with wiring. Past couple Sundays, I've been working with JMRI and stuff, and and um, James has been working on on bench work, and and John's been laying track, and we've been almost like in in four corners of the room. And everybody's just doing their own thing. There's, there's not, it's, it's surprisingly quiet for having, you know, three or four guys in there at a time. You know, there, there's not a whole lot of, of chit chat. Everybody's really just kind of doing their own thing. You know, every now and then I'll get a question. Hey, where's the, 
where this Phillips head screwdrivers or where's the jig, you know, but it's like, it's, it's not like we're, we're standing there, you know, yakking the whole time. Everybody's really focused on, on their own thing. We only really talk at lunch. So it's, it's kind of, it, it is sort of social distancing in miniature. Um, and who is this John fellow you speak of? John is our new guy. He is, um, he is a friend of Val's. Uh, he works on some other layouts that Val works on and Val recruited him to start coming and, and helping with construction. Cool. So that's gotta be so a he, help to have an extra guy there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's, he's really, you know, he's really handy. He's got his own layout. He does a lot of work on other guys layouts. So he can do bench work. He can do track. He can do wiring. He can do scenery. You know, he's he's really a, a, a jack of all trades, and and he's really been, you know, it, it's it's good, you know, to have somebody like that where you can just say, hey, go, you know, go lay the track. I want it on two inch centers, and you don't need to spend a whole lot of time teaching somebody what you want done. You just give them instructions, and they know what to do. You know, and if, if they have questions about how you want something done, they'll ask. So, yeah, he's he's been a great um, he, he's been a great find. He's been a great asset so far. Cool. And so, uh, Tom, can I ask you a question in all on all sincerity? Sure. Like, can you honestly give me an honest answer about yeah. this? Yeah, of like course. You, you promise? Yes, I promise. All right. When this is all over, can we hug it out? Absolutely. Okay. That would mean a lot to me. I might drive. Absolutely. Down. I might drive down there just for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Adam. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. So Adam Pinellas, who is a uh, conductor on the California Zephyr on Amtrak. Uh, Adam, I think every time I'm riding my bicycle in Florida, I think you, because my bike path for 12 miles, basically, or 10 miles goes right along the CSX main line. And, there's always an Amtrak train going by there. So I'm always. Oh, wow, like, I saw your video the other day. Yeah, I know. Eh? So, how is this? Uh, yeah, I was like, go ahead. I was thinking, I wonder if he's thinking about me. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know what? When, when you, you, I feel confident that when you're thinking about me, I'm thinking about you. Good chance. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, I how does little Mike feel about this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> little Mike is. <laughs> You know what? I thought, you know what, Kaylee? Thanks very much. But up until up until now, he didn't know. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> so, Adam, you're a conductor on the California Zephyr. How hard is it? What's the what's happening with you in your life right now? Um, I don't know. I guess we'll find out tonight. Okay. So, is this your first? Uh, this is your first crack at it. No, I mean, it's been getting serious with Amtrak for, oh, what is it, a couple, well, a couple weeks anyway. They've started to make posts and, you know, let us know what's going on and keeping us up to date, what they're doing. And, you know, they're just, they haven't shut the train down yet. So um, they, they keep talking about, you know, reducing service and cutting train size down and, things like that. And I do believe that they cut our train size down a couple cars, possibly even eliminating the dining car right now, which they probably should. But, um, other than that, it's, it's just go to work. Um, I'm not all that thrilled about it really. Cause I mean, it's one thing to social distance yourself from, you know, your friends and, and, uh, extended relatives and your own community. But, you know, then and then all of a sudden go throw yourself into a train with all these strangers from God knows where, you know. And uh, so it's kind of I mean, that kind of frustrates me a little bit, but uh, they're still paying me. And that's unfortunately I need to uh, I depend on that. So, yeah, but uh, but yeah, I, I just I'm just trying to, you know, do the best I can with there and come home and not not bring anything home. That's right. So it's, uh, it's, you know, like you're one of those people that's the train is kind of an essential service. So you're kind of thrown into a situ- I, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I've said that for a while. I was like, you know, people still have to travel. There's some, to some degree, people still have to travel, you know? And, uh, 
I mean, I'm sure they could shut that down if they really wanted to. And they, and like I said, I, I, my opinion is, is I, I really think they should just shut the whole place down for a few weeks and, you know, but I unfortunately not sure how many people would actually take it serious enough to, you know, have that, have anything really good come out of that. But I, uh, as far as the train running, you know, we're still running. It's, uh, in fact, right now I'm an hour and a half late. So <laughs> but the train's an hour and a half late. I got to go to work. I got to leave here in about an hour and a half or so. Oh, okay. But, uh, but, but yeah, I, I don't know, man. I just, it, I don't really know what to say because this is all completely well, sure. new and different for everybody. And yeah, it's doing different for everybody. And, uh, so just I, it'll be interesting because this will be my first trip after they've gotten real like after even the you know just the the nation and everybody's gotten really super serious about it you know like oh man starting to really limit what people should do and such so i i really don't know it's going to be interesting to see what happened tonight yeah okay well good luck we love you buddy yeah yeah man <laughs> absolutely that's the best part of the aml nation i think that's what this pod this particular podcast and if I can pull this off and I can get it out there, well, maybe we can do this every week until this whole thing's over. And, and uh, the best part about this whole AML Nation is we're trying to, uh, you know, give people something else to think about. They can listen to this while they're working on their layouts or whatever they're doing and walking around the block or whatever they're doing. You or know, fixing the days to their toilets. Yeah, or fixing yeah. the days to their toilets. <laughs> so, yeah, just, just, so, <laughs> just so we're all clear. Okay, there will not be I will not be adding a bidet to the toilets in the house for Tomstock, nor will I be renting porta potties with bidets for outside for Tomstock. I just want to make that completely clear. If you want that, (laughs) if you want that experience, you need to go to Adam's house. Well, thank you. Uh, Yeah, come on over. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. (laughs) Fun. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, tom uh, stocks tom stocks gonna take off and adam palooza is gonna blow up (laughs) Uh, we're we're out (laughs) yeah Yeah. yeah. how about you chris how are you making out well you know like kaylee um i'm an engineer so by nature i don't play well with others so pretty much all day long i socially isolate myself from my coworkers and really being home is not much different than being at work except that the little monsters are hanging around here because there's no school. So that's annoying. But, um, you know, I got my computer here. I can log in and do all the same kind of work. And we, you know, the, before we got bought, we did a lot of stuff on, um, you know, tele you know, conferencing and so forth before, because half our group is in California and part of our group is in the Netherlands and so forth. So, so it's just kind of the same, and uh, also like Kaylee, the you know manufacturing really doesn't affect me because I'm working on the next generation stuff. So you know, just keep plugging away, and uh, you know the guys in California are really getting hit hard. You know, so it's interesting to see what it's going to look like in a couple weeks because they're they're feeling it now. Yeah, and uh, but uh, so far they're all healthy and. So everybody, everybody stays that way. So everybody in your health, your home is okay. Yeah, my my home, everybody I work with uh, so far, everybody's okay. All right, uh, Tom, how about you? Everybody okay? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Everybody's everybody's fine. Um, all my peeps are fine. Family's fine. Perfect. Uh, Adam, everybody's okay with you. Um. Yeah, we're all doing good. We, uh, I don't know, if, I don't know how na- how national this news made it, but yesterday we had an earthquake. Mm. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yep, I did see yep. that. I heard about that, which was pretty pretty wild. <laughs> but uh, I mean, that if people weren't freaking out before, they really were then, you know. So I mean, it's I've been just kind of kicking back and watching the craziness. It's right. been kind of fun that way, but. Uh, Earthquakes are cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, it's, a, it's a hell of a way to wake up, really. The the uh, the the only one I've actually been in two earthquakes one a real one and a fake one in in uh, Ontario. But uh, my uh, and I was in California. My wife and I had only been uh, married a couple of years, so I'm 
late twenties, early thirties, and we were in California, and it was uh, let's just say we were it was after activity, and uh, we were going to sleep, and uh, the bed started to vibrate. And I'm right at that point with sleep, you know, where you're kind of, you're just fading off and you're, hand, you're going, is that my hand? You know, you're just fading off. And all of a sudden the bed starts to vibrate and I'm thinking, oh crap, I forgot to turn the vibrator off. <laughs> <laughs> Magic fingers. Oh, I saw it coming. And, oh. then, and, then, <laughs> and then suddenly I sit, uh. bolt, I sit bolt upright and go, wait a minute. There's no vibrator in this room on this bed. <laughs> uh, and everything was moving. And uh, and being a pasty white guy from Canada, uh, that got my attention in a hurry, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, Kelly, what's happening with you and your life? Uh, so far, the biggest thing, obviously, is the park is not going to open this year, at least to postpone until this whole crisis changes. Uh, we're close to the public. Um, I still have access to the park. Uh, that may change because I just I just noticed tonight uh, California is closing all non-essential businesses, which I don't know how that's going to work out. But and then Portland right now is talking about um, sheltering in place, which means that uh, you're either stuck at home or if you got a good excuse to go out and go somewhere, that's um, that's kind of iffy for me because huh? I'd love to be able to go to the park and do gardening or something like that. At least I'm there by myself. Um, microtrains, uh, we're losing orders because nobody is going to train shows or they're not, the, the uh, vendors are not going to train shows. And um, so they've cut back hours for people like Smoke and Joe got cut back to, he's actually salary now, not or, uh, hourly now. So he's a little perturbed about that. And luckily I have few really part time. So I'm right now on the cusp. If they shut the company down and that's a financial um, issue that I'll have to deal with. Campbell's is going good. There's only two of us there. So there's no, there's no issue with uh, being too many people there. And there's no issue with separation because Tom Miller, who does all the laser and the cutting of the, the pieces of wood is in one part of the building and I'm back in another part of the building. So it's, uh, it's interesting. Let's just see what happens. Um, so far we only have two people that have, are positive in the city of Medford. So that's interesting. That's yeah. So, and everybody, can I ask cool. you a question? Sure. Uh, and can you give me a serious answer about this? Sure. And it means a lot to me. When when this is all over, can we hug it out? Sure. All right. Sure. Okay. Sure. At, at Tomstock, we'll hug it out. If yeah, if we get there, yeah. absolutely. Yep. If we get there, absolutely. Uh, finally, Bruce, uh, the moderately agitated male boy. How's uh, right. how's your how's your how's things with you? Uh, so far we're doing all right because our company. Uh, is in the servicing industry, so we can still get into uh, do work at some clients. Uh, some of them are being funny initially, but then they realize, no, we can get back in. So uh, for the foreseeable future, we're doing all right, and uh, we're widespread enough around in the office. We're not uh, bothering each other. So uh, you know, we keep plugging on right now, and uh, away we go. All right. Well, How's the house coming along? Uh, the contractors have put prices into the insurance company, and I have heard nothing since. So we're waiting to talk to the insurance guys about uh, what the next steps are and mm. hopefully get things going shortly. Did something mm. happen to your house? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 you might say that. Question. Uh, Bruce, serious question. Yes. I don't need to ask you if we're going to hug it out because we try to do that as much as possible anyways. Yes. Yes, we do. Um, uh, when your house caught on fire and you mm -hmm. threw on your sweatpants, what T-shirt did you grab? Uh, my uh, marginally adequate uh, AML T-shirt. Of course. There you go. Boom. 
what else, what other t-shirt would you get? You'd always grab your uh, exactly AML t-shirt, unless of course on you're Kelly. Top. Go ahead, Ralph. On the top of the pile. On the top of the pile. Atta boy, Ralphie boy, Ralphie boy. Always coming in there. Hey, Ralph. Uh, we were asking everybody how they're doing during this uh, whole COVID nineteen thing. So give us uh, give us the last word here. How are you doing? Uh, Jane and I are doing fine. Uh, we are sort of. Uh, what do you call it? Self. I don't know the word. Isolating. We're, my, yeah, we're I, staying. We're staying at home as much as possible. When shopping needs to be done, I go out. Um, that's my choice. Right. I, I'd rather be me than her, anyway. Um, <laughs> it's kind of hard not seeing the grandkids and 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 my two sons, but we have uh, the luxury of the internet. So we do a FaceTime with the with the grandkids and and that sort of thing. So we're we're staying we're we're doing okay. We're we're staying fine. We got notice today from um, uh, British Airways that they canceled our flight. We had a, a trip planned to Denmark to visit Jane's relatives. When was that? We were uh, the end of April to hmm. uh, okay. uh, I guess second or third week of May. So yeah, and, so that that's something I'm wondering about because I have an end of May trip planned to England, and so far well, it's still British all Air. Up there. British Air, uh, they they notified us today by email that the trip to Denmark has been canceled, but they didn't <laughs> say anything about the com the the return trip. So uh, <laughs> Jane Jane spent uh, I guess it was three hours on the phone trying to. Uh, find out what's going on, and they finally canceled everything. Because what's the point of having a return trip if you don't have a two trip? <laughs> so did they refund that your money, or did they just give you a voucher? Uh, I, well, as far as I know, they refund. We did it on points. Mm -hmm. um, so just, let's try not. We to have uh, I, my my credit card is it. All my points for my credit card go to Aeroplan, which we can change over to British Air and they returned all our points and mm -hmm. the we the ta we hadn't paid the taxes yet that's what we had to pay for in cash yeah I never pay my taxes uh, I never pay my taxes yeah. anyways why let's not let's not why? go too far down that road anyways it's uh we don't want to get okay so, so there we are we're Jane and I are, are sitting here we're happy and we're we're self-isolating because she's upstairs in her sewing room I'm down in the train room uh, doing my hobbies. I, I guess it's not the train room anymore. It has a layout in it, but I'm doing all kinds of other hobbies as well. There you go. So perfect. I'm quite. Ha I'm quite happy. Um, I I get online with uh, with my buddies and so on every night. So I I'm good. Perfect. I thought self isolation was. Kind of, I just started taking pictures of myself, but it turned out I was. I misunderstood what the whole point was. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. God. Uh, all right. Well, I think that's pretty much it. We managed. So we'll see if this works. If this works, we'll try to do this again. And we uh, talk and if, over each other. Again? What's that? We're going to talk over each other again? Yo, absolutely. Yeah, let's uh, yeah. let's finish yeah. up. Yeah, with well, it. why wouldn't we do that? Yeah, we, why yeah. exactly? There you go. And the horse you rode in on. Yeah, and the horse. I have to admit that went a lot better without hard part. Yeah, that went a lot better with. Yeah. See, we, he's an yeah. integral part. You know, he, hard part Absolutely. is an important part. He's an integral hard part. Yeah, he's an integral <laughs> hard part. He's a. Uh, uh, you can't. Can you really? Can you have fun without Kevin? I mean, seriously. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's a. That's a tough one. I don't know if I I'd can. want to try. It's, I can, but it's more fun with Kevin. I had fun watching Adam's video, and Kevin wasn't nowhere near me, so. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. wow. Yeah. Holy mackerel. Well, you know what? I'm just you know Adam's what? Adam's fun too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Adam's. Adam's. I'm a good time. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I can take or leave Adam. You know, I'm 50. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. Ouch. S speaking of Adam, uh, huh? has uh, the fearless leader decided to buy a truck yet, Adam? I ain't buying shit. <laughs> you know, he's trying to talk about me. He's trying to talk. He's trying, and and the, he still is looking for the. 
He's still looking for the message where he told me I had to buy the, I had to, <laughs> and he still can't. See, this is how this all started. He sold, he oh, bought, he, he rebuilt a pickup truck, a really nice, and turned it into a hot rod and sold it for, I don't know, seventeen, eighteen thousand $18,000. And I said, holy smokes, you sold that? I wish I'd known about that. I would have bought that. And he says, well, I'll build you one. And I go, okay, if you can build one for around that price, 20 grand or less, I'm in. Okay. And then nothing. So I don't understand how this works. I don't know. I don't know. There's a, somehow there's been a missing, there's a missing, uh, uh, there's a okay. missing part of the whole let's deal. Let's break it down. Uh, right let's, here. Yeah, let's break it down right here. When somebody wants a custom car, a classic car, or you know, just a, a project. 90% of the time they already have it and they just bring it in and they want it restored. They want, and then they have a list of things that they want done, you know, um, usually uh, industry standard is that's usually about 50% down that, that covers uh, materials. And then the other 50% is due at pickup. It, they're, every shop does it just a little bit different. Um, that's kind of how I've done all mine. When you just say, Hey, I want this truck. I want it done on August 1st of 2020. And I'll see you then. Well, and it's usually going to be about five times as expensive as it would have been if you supplied, you know, the, the project. Just Cause at that point it's, there's so much left up in question. Plus I have a hundred percent overhead, you know, so it's kind of, or, or any shop would, you know, so that's, that's kind of, that's kind of when you want a custom car built, that's pretty much how it's done. Right. And, and, and that has to do with me. How you wanted a custom truck built. Yeah. But I thought we were buddies. <laughs> we are. That's what, that's why I, that's why I try to refrain Here, doing this look, kind of look, stuff for my buddies. Let, let me, let me lay this out. <laughs> Your buddies, but if you want a truck built, either you give him the truck and he does it at a lesser cost or you let him pick the truck and you pay a bigger cost. Ah, uh, okay. So then when he had a truck for sale and he didn't tell me, that was like, I just, he bought, went out and bought a truck, then rebuilt it. And then sold it to the first yeah, cowboy, that, the cowboy that came down the street. That that truck I I happened on. I mean, it just happened to be. <laughs> well, then go happen it, on another. Then I, go I happen it. on another truck, and I'll buy it off you. <laughs> I don't understand yeah, what that one. <laughs> that one fell together, man. I that one's pretty. That's, things like that are kind of rare. I had no intention of it. it. I mean, it wasn't even a truck that I like. You know, it was it, I. I got it for a good deal. I I threw it together. It was kind of a one weird, just crazy situation how that ended up happening, you know. And I honestly didn't plan on selling it. The guy just <laughs> saw me at the gas station one day, and he wouldn't leave me alone. And he ended up following me home one, day, I guess. And then with for a week, he stopped by every other day. <laughs> so I either had to shoot him or sell him the truck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't understand how this all pertains to me, but anyways, carry on. <laughs> you know, uh, um, if you want me to build your truck, we'll work it so out. So, Adam, Adam, get him an S10 with a Ford motor in it. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, S10s are <laughs> ugly. Come on, Ralph, get out, get your head out of your ass. All right, so we're coming to the end of this. I am not going to edit any of this at all, maybe except for that one little tiny bit at the start where Ralph used the S word, because we're going to put this on the free channel. But other than that. If there's, there's nothing wrong with the S word. Ah, uh, well, uh, we try not to do that on the that's, free channel. That's public domain these days. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you can't buy any toilet paper. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what my favorite part. To- <laughs> you know what my favorite part of this show was. What good is a return trip without a getting there trip? <laughs> 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 Uh, uh, we're going to start another show. Okay. If this works out, we're going to do this again for a while to help. We hope we're helping people get through, uh, through the day. Uh, uh, Bruce, I think we're helping people get through the day. I think so. I think so too. Uh, and if, if you like this, put it on, uh, put a, make a comment on, 
uh, fans of the, uh, what is that called, Chris? What do you call it? Fans of a modeler's life. Perfect. Facebook group. Facebook group. Page group. Yeah, it's a group, isn't it? No, not page group. It's a it's a group. All right. Uh, it's a group. It's a group. But we all are socially isolated, so. Yes, we are. We're at least six feet apart. Yeah, we Not are. to mention socially awkward. Yeah, yeah, we're socially awkward and isolated. <laughs> Uh, I, I made that post the other day. The thing about this whole uh, uh, coronavirus thing is, it's it's made socially uh, social awkwardness normal. So <laughs> people don't know what to do with their hands. They don't know how close to stand to people. Hey, Ron, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Uh, uh, can you give me an honest answer? I I try to. <laughs> all right. When this is all over, can we hug it out? Uh, absolutely. All right. Uh, and Kaylee. I'm not even going to ask you. I'm just going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to come up and start hugging it out. Uh, it'll be like get out of Springfield. Get out. Get out of this man off me. Um, <sighs> are you ready, Kelly? I'm ready. You sure? He if was you want to reach, ready. Yeah. Since we're all going to be stuck in our houses in the next couple of weeks, uh, if you want to reach everybody at uh, on our email, it is modelerslife at gmail.com that's modelers with one L like laughter not two L's like Kelly wow I like that wow. one L like that good. nice nice that was very I'm well good done at, I'm getting good at this Hey, uh, and uh, when I, I listened you did I listened to the Jason Tron interview uh, when I was driving back from Florida and by the way I was observing the speed limit the entire time um uh Oh, I got to tell you guys a story, a really quick story. So I drove yeah. back from Florida and uh, ha- south of Pittsburgh. Uh, there's uh, two transport trucks. I'm on the freeway. I'm on the I-79 south of Pittsburgh, not far from Carnegie, Pennsylvania, uh, Jim Sacco, home of Jim Sacco and City Classics. So uh, there's these two transport trucks ahead of me and the one transport truck is passing the other one. And as he's doing it, I see fire coming out the side of the the left side of the truck. And you can't really tell where it is because it's pouring rain. And I see fire coming out the left side of the truck. And uh, and I, we go another quarter of a mile and more fire comes out the right, left side of the truck. So I'm thinking, I understand this is against the rules, but I'm thinking, I grab my phone and I'm thinking, I got to take a snap of this as I pass because now this truck has moved back into the right-hand lane. And I'm thinking, I got to take a snap of this as I go by because this truck appears to be uh, uh, sending fire out. And also, I was thinking, if it's really on fire, I'll have to try to signal the driver. But before I got to do any of that, and by the time, and I was maybe, I was maybe five car lengths from the back of the trailer. Two of the wheels separated from the trailer. No. <laughs> on the left side as I Ooh. approached it. <laughs> and you know what I thought to myself at first, the very first thing I thought to myself, Kelly, go ahead and guess what I thought to myself. Uh, you said the O O S word. Yeah. Just, sorry, two yeah. words. And the first one was, O. yeah. 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 <laughs> and then I went, Hey, the tires are separated from that truck and they started <laughs> rolling. And as I'm looking at these tires separate from the truck and they did it beautifully. And at first I thought he'd blown a tire when I, when I saw the fire because I could smell. And then they separated perfectly and they're starting to roll down the highway and the, and there's a big grassy median and they're starting to head to the median. They're making a, a, a slight left turn towards the median. I suddenly realized there's a large, I would say six to eight inch large object bouncing towards me, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> which was like, I guess the hub or something. So I swerved to miss that. Somehow, oh, yeah. I would love to say that my driving skill was excellent and I missed it because of my driving skill, but I'm pretty sure it was just luck. And, oh, we can go with that. Yeah, and, We can uh, go with that. And I would say it was uh, the kind of luck that starts with a B. And uh, so anyway, so anyway, somehow I missed this bouncing hub that was... You know, like really big. And I got, I went on to the grassy median and I thought, then my, my brain goes, Hey, it's pouring rain and I'm driving on grass. <laughs> oh, <laughs> somehow I managed to stay on the road. I have no idea how, but I did. And now I'm watching this set of wheels. These both, both wheels, the whole thing came off the truck 
it was the the, the, the second axle and the, not the very rear axle but the next axle the whole thing's off the truck now these two wheels are going across the median and now i see there's two cars coming the other way and i'm thinking your next thought is how do i warn those cars but of course we're all i'm doing like 60 miles an hour i've slowed down a bit and uh you know these cars are good, so there's no way you can warn them of course and somehow they miss this tire that goes out onto the highway they both miss the tire these two tandem tires and the whole time you're watching it now i'm about even with this thing and it bounces off the guardrail on the other side of the southbound lanes starts coming back across the medium and i'm far enough ahead of it now and the truck with it it came off of is pulled off onto the shoulder and I watch it in my rear view mirror come back across the median, bounce off the guardrail, hit the truck that was behind the, the second transport truck, bounce off of that. And as he's trying to miss it, he slams into the car beside him. And then the, tri- the tire falls over and kind of lands in front of the car and he, he crashes into it. And it was like, wow. And by the time I, the worst part was by the time I got pulled over and ran back to make sure everybody do what I could do, of course, which wasn't much. And there was no injuries, but the worst part was by the time I ran back or walked back or whatever, the, the traffic was closed. There was no, there was no way to, for the cars. So there was no danger for moving vehicles, but, but I, I got soaked. So I have a question for you. Yeah. During that whole process, did it seem like it was in slow motion? No, actually, it didn't. It seemed like it was uh, quite amazing. <laughs> it was like, it was one of those things going, hey, you hear about that on the news all the time. Look at that. Sure enough. And then you start realizing, well, wait a minute. This is kind of dangerous. <laughs> but you didn't miss a detail. Well, I kind of, it was kind of, uh, it didn't, well, the, the wheels were slowing down the whole time. And I was pretty amazed that I missed the bouncing hub. And I, my favorite part afterwards was me thinking to myself, Hey, I'm going 65 miles an hour and I'm driving on grass. Holy crap. I could have used the bidet then, I'll tell you, Adam. (laughs) 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 Anyways, that was it. Uh, Kaylee, are you ready? Yes. So remember, remember. A Modeler's Life podcast is considered marginally adequate by 6 out of 10... The day testers. time for the New Jersey Transit Elevator Escalator Report. Whether you want it or not. Take it away, Dave. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Plainfield Westbound's out this morning uh, for some door modifications. They're going to adjust some of the equipment hardware that came in yesterday, so that should be back later this afternoon. Ridgewood number two is out. Vendors en route to take a look at the doors on that one. Those doors are open. Uh, at Woodbridge, uh, we had a report of an ADA customer stuck in the elevator. Um, the vendor went there and found the elevator operating normally, so that's back in service. Uh, Nork Pen number nine is out with a skirt panel replacement project, same as last week. And Secaucus number two, uh, that was the, that's one that's out for its uh, step chain replacement and a lower carriage assembly adjustment. So that's still going to be uh, with a good date there of December 1. It's another Lincoln Homer.